we're talking about the head of the Federal Reserve and whitest man to ever be named Jerome, Jerome Powell. It's hard to find a picture of this guy where it doesn't look like he just walked off a Brooks Brothers catalog shoot. If you listen to him speak though, don't worry most interesting man in the world, your position is safe. For those of you longtime subscribers, you know I follow this guy to the point where the fact that I haven't gotten some sort of restraining order yet means the FBI probably isn't doing their job well enough. Now it's definitely been quiet on the monetary policy front for the past few months, but based on the speech he just gave, it's clear that his perspective might be changing. Before we get into that though, what even is the Fed? Well, it's an agency under the federal government exempt from executive oversight. Now you see why it's so intriguing, right? Just a rogue group of economists who answer to nobody. The movie slogans write themselves. Now they control one key rate that, as we'll get to in a second, can have serious economic implications if people even think they're going to change it. I mean today regarding this rate, he said he would act as appropriate to sustain economic expansion. And let me give you a look at the effect of those remarks. We've got the Dow up around 450 points. It's best day in fact since February. The S&P 500 climbing some 1.9% towards its biggest one day gain since January. And the Nasdaq spiked by more than 2% back out of correction territory. We'll get to the importance of this in a second. But first, this rate. And don't worry, the news generally just refers to it as the rate when they're talking about the Fed. So you know it's important. Also a little bit hard to get confused. For the sake of this episode not turning into an AP economics course or an incredibly effective sleep aid, I'm not going to get into how the sausage is made. The basic idea is that when the Fed raises the rate, interest rates in the economy go up from the rates on new loans to the interest in your savings account. So when you want people to spend all the money they saved and take out loans to spend even more, lower this rate. Loans become cheap and the most you learn from your savings account is the free toaster you get when you open it. Now you generally do this when the economy is in the dumps to get some free stimulus spending. On the other hand, if you want to get people to save more money and in essence charge up some money that you can dump onto the economy during a downturn, raise the rates. Interest rates on savings accounts go up and taking out loans gets more expensive. For quite some time, Jerome Powell has been quite the thorn in Donald Trump's side because our Federal Reserve but is also raising rates too fast because they think our economy is too good. And I say, I don't want you to, every time we announce a good quarter, you have to raise interest rates. I don't want that. I'm very unhappy with the Federal Reserve. Yeah, but they're independent. It got so bad that, at one point a few months ago, he actually had to go on TV and assure everyone that he couldn't be fired by the president. So this brings us to today and Jerome Powell's announcement. Before we get into it, one weird thing about Federal Reserve announcements. They have the tendency to be more passive aggressive than a roommate whose preferred communication method is post-it notes. So you definitely have to read between the lines of these things. I mean the Federal Reserve Committee debates and pours over every word of these speeches like they're writing a text to their high school crush. And this speech? Well, it wasn't any different. You see, right now Powell is walking a tightrope. He wants to stay optimistic with still solid growth, but he also wants to show he's willing to cut the rate if need be. Yeah, you can't go out and tell your high school crush you think she's cute. You have to say, well, under the right conditions you're cute, but I don't know, do you think you're cute? In this case, he had to say, under the right conditions we'll take actions to stimulate a shrinking economy, but I don't know, will the economy need stimulation? I know, truly profound, right? It's hard to imagine how these stock markets wouldn't all jump with such an inspirational message. But the Fed had a decision to make. On one side, you could follow his speech from two months ago. Job creation is strong, wages are moving up, so that's, that's a very healthy thing. With inflation, we see it, in muted inflation pressures, even now with, with um, really historically low unemployment, 
and, and a great recovery, an ongoing recovery in the labor markets, we still see muted inflation pressures. And that gives us the ability to be patient with monetary policy. And that's what we're going to do. The committee has decided that with, uh, with our policy rate in the range of neutral. We were in what some economists call a Goldilocks period. Not too hot, not too cold, and the economic consensus was, well, let's not screw this up by, you know, doing anything. We'll just coast on those last year's tax cuts and increased government spending, and you know, wait for something bad to happen. Keep people saving and prepare for a soft landing. Bloomberg was predicting the Federal Reserve seems to be achieving the fabled soft landing. With growth likely to transition down towards the longer term trend in 2019, expect monetary policy to remain on hold for the foreseeable future. Well, that sounds generally good, like a relaxing if nothing else strategy. It was very different from what Jerome Powell was saying today. I'd first like to say a word about recent developments involving trade negotiations and other matters. We do not know how or when these issues will be resolved. We are closely monitoring the implications of these de developments for the U.S. economic outlook and, as always, we will act as appropriate to sustain the expansion with a strong labor market and inflation near our symmetric 2% objective. Forget about that soft landing, pull up, pull up, pull up! Now we're more focused on keeping this economy growing. Basically, forget Goldilocks, we're gonna chug some Red Bull, rally, and get Americans ready to spend their savings and take out some loans to keep this growth going. So what, over the last two months, changed to get the Fed to sing such a different tune? Well, the main variable to emerge were these trade wars the US is currently fighting with China, Japan, the European Union, and maybe Mexico. Two months ago, or in Trump years, eight years ago, we were pushing through a trade deal with Mexico and Canada. It looked like the trade war with China was going to resolve soon, and the European and Japanese trade wars, well, we were about as concerned with them then as we are now. And this goes to the heart of this change in policy. With the escalation of these trade wars, the Federal Reserve is saying, if any of these wars actually starts damaging the US labor market, well, we're going to step in, make it so that saving your money becomes a waste of time and loans are cheap, and get people spending again. This might sound uncontroversial. For example, prices on some electronics that are manufactured in China and then exported to the US could rise as a result of the tariffs, which could cause certain device prices to rise. If that happens, sales from the US tech companies could fall. Not only that, but the higher cost of devices would likely cause Americans to curb their spending. Well then do the thing you do to get Americans to spend more. Crack that code, where's my Nobel Peace Prize? The worry here is America's future ability to fight a recession that can't be resolved by us signing a trade deal. Now what do I mean by that? Remember how when you cut the rate you're telling people, hey now would be a good time to take that money you've been saving up and go buy yourself that nice new TV. But well, once they spend that money they've been saving, that's it until you raise rates and get the people saving a consistent amount again. Lowering the rates will make it hard for the Fed to fight a recession because the rates probably cannot be cut below zero, or what the Fed terms the effective lower bound. Yeah, you start lowering that interest rate into the negative territory, suddenly people who take out loans are making money and people who keep their money in the bank start losing money, cats become dogs, a super moon comes out, it's just pandemonium. Not quite that, but when Japan tried it, well, people invested their savings in bank of below my mattress. Because guess what, they don't charge me to put money there. It pretty substantially screwed up their lending market as well, because when you take cash out of the banks and make new loans unprofitable, well, banks took any cash they had and put it under their own corporate mattresses until the rates went back up. So what's the takeaway from the Federal Reserve's announcement? Simply put, rather than hold out for longer term structural recessions, they're going to step in if the impact of the trade wars start to slow the American economy. This should give the president more leeway in offensive tariff actions. 
It has also given uncertain markets a little more cushion in what the worst case scenario for the economy could be if the trade wars escalate to the point where they actually cause systemic damage. So that's what just happened. I realize I might sound like a pilot with one strap of the parachute on trying to assure you here, but everything in the economy is still really good. Don't panic. What this means is, if things get bad because of the trade wars, the Federal Reserve no longer has reservations about getting involved. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.